Good afternoon YouTube and welcome to my shop. Uh, it's a little cold and rainy out today so I decided to stay in and continue doing what I've been doing for years. Uh, taking Harbor Freight, let's call it junk, and improving it to make it an actual usable tool. For my first video we're going to be taking a look at the infamous Harbor Freight free flashlight. Uh, thanks to COVID and uh, the China trade wars, um, I don't get into politics and all that, but it seems like this is the only free thing Harbor Freight gives out anymore, so they must be hurting. Um, but just because it's the last thing left doesn't mean it's no good. There's a lot to like about this little flashlight. Um, the magnet is great, the hook is super handy for hanging on wires or pipes, and uh, now that they've added this cob LED, it's actually quite bright. Um, unfortunately, the batteries are getting a little low on this one. If you can stare into a cob LED and then see anything afterwards, then you know it's probably not as bright as it should be. So we're going to fix that, but we're not just going to throw it in the landfill and go get another free one, which is probably the smart thing to do. We're going to take it apart and see if we can't make it rechargeable somehow. Um, we're also going to get rid of this. Um, I really hate flashlights where you have to click three times to get light that you need. So we're just going to make it on and off and get rid of all this uh, multifunction nonsense. With the introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get her apart and see what we got inside. See what we have to work with here. Three mismatched screws on the back. Four more on the front. These are the famous Harbor Freight batteries. These are the uh, legation flavor of battery, whatever that is. Sometimes you get the, uh, where are the other ones? The Warriors. I've never had two flashlights with the same kind of battery in it, although I'm sure they're all made in the same factory. Throw them in the trash, we don't need them anymore. Four more screws on the inside to get to the good parts. And here's what we got. All right, well, I've taken a look at the wiring, and this seems to be the correct schematic for this light. What you have here is your battery. Positive goes to both the three LED array on the front of the light, as well as to the big cob LED. Ground goes to a uh, single pole triple throw switch. Position one completes the circuit through a resistor for the array. Position two is off. And position three is ground for the big cob LED. Now, I've taken a couple of these apart, and sometimes the positive and negative is, is switched. Sometimes uh, the positive goes through the switch. Sometimes it's the negative going through the switch. Um, but they're just LEDs, so if you plug it in and it doesn't work, flip it around and that will probably work. So what we're going to do is take this entire array out of the circuit. We're going to take out this resistor, and then we're going to put a jumper between position 1 and 3, so that we'll have essentially two positions, power to the cob, off, and power to the cob. First things first, we're going to take the old soldering iron and disconnect the wires from the battery terminals. We will not be using these battery terminals at all. In fact, take it one step further, just going to rip them out. The next thing we're going to do is remove this little PCB with the switch on it. So underneath you'll see our basic schematic. Here's the pins for the switch. This is the common. This is power to the cob LED. Or in this case it's ground to the cob LED and some other models it's the power. Like I said sometimes you have to check it out and make sure because shocker quality control is not that consistent on these free flashlights. Uh, position 3 is the power, no I'm sorry, position 1 is ground to the LED array. We have a little service mount resistor here, so when the circuit is in that position, these pins are closed, ground goes through the resistor, and back to the battery terminal. And in position 2, power goes nowhere, it's off. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take this LED, or sorry, we're going to take this resistor completely out of the circuit, and then we're going to make a little jumper between positions 1 and 3 with some wire. Now 
Next, we're going to rip out this LED array. Some people find use in this thing, but this is where we're going to put our charge port. So, it's got to go. And we'll just unsolder it from the PCB. And chuck it. Go ahead and snip the extra wire off of our little homemade jumper. And just as a proof of concept, I have the ubiquitous 18650 battery. I have one of these lying around. So if we put power and ground up to the battery, or I should say positive and negative, sorry. You can see it lights up nice and bright. And when we flip the switch, that's all we have, on and off. Perfect. Now, I don't think we're going to get this 18650 into this enclosure. Um, I've seen other folks on YouTube do it, and usually what you wind up with is some mess where you have it taped together so it can stay together. There's just no room in here. So what we're going to do is use the marginally less common, but still super useful, 14500. It's a lithium-ion cell, just like the 18650. It's 3.7 volts, just like the 18650, but it's much smaller. It's about the size of a AA battery. That I think we can cram in here. Now for charging and maintaining the battery, I got a couple of these off of eBay. They cost literally pennies a piece, about the size of a postage stamp. And all you gotta do is break them apart and you have a super handy little chip here. Essentially you've got a micro USB charger here. This is power out to your load, in this case the light and then positive and negative to your battery so that it will actually uh, maintain the charge and monitor the battery while you're charging it so it doesn't blow your house up while you're on vacation and have this thing plugged in. A rechargeable flashlight that you can't charge is pretty useless so what we're going to do first is plug it into a micro USB cord make sure this chip works. Blue is on, red lights flashing that means it's good. If it's a bad chip you probably won't see these LEDs on at all. And before I try fitting the battery Let's make sure we can fit this in. My plan is to cut a hole in that little lens there for the USB port. And I think, if I'm lucky, this will wedge in there just right. Yeah, like it was meant to be there. Nice and solid. Probably doesn't even need any glue, but we're going to put some in anyway. And then we'll just have to carve a little hole. This is not recommended use for a soldering iron, but my tools, I do what I want. Just going to make a little outline. Now before we sandwich this thing in there and hot glue it in, first we're going to solder on our wires. So we're going to solder the positive and negative for the light to the positive and negative out on the board. Now in the process of soldering this, some of the wires straight up broke, so another example of cost cutting, but you can't complain, it's a free flashlight. So what I'm going to do is take some higher quality wire, I'm very successful, um, and solder those on in place of the original wires. And we'll solder the little minus out pin on the chip to our new black wire, and run that. To this wire on the PCB which powers everything. Same thing for the positive, we'll go from the positive out to the positive terminal on the cob LED which already broke off. The next thing I need to do is solder the red and black wires, which I'm going to go put to the positive and negative terminals of this battery. 
I'm leaving the wires nice and long because I don't know for sure where I'm going to put the battery just yet. So B plus, B plus. It's my red wire. And the black wire to B minus. Now, when it comes to soldering onto batteries, it's a bit of a controversial topic. Some people will tell you that if you try to solder onto a lithium cell, it can and will explode and kill you and everyone in your family. Um, I don't know, do it at your own risk. Personally, I've been doing it for a long time. You just have to be smart about it. Clean the surface up really good. Get it nice and, sh nice and clean. Uh, use a good soldering iron. Use a good rosin core solder. And it tins it pretty quickly and you'll never have a problem. So I'll just take the Dremel. Scuff it up a little bit. And we'll get to soldering. Now, if you can find an 18 or a 14500 with solder tabs on it already, that's preferable, but they're kind of hard to find. So just get the surface of the battery hot enough to melt the solder. Adding a little bit of solder between the iron and the surface of the battery creates a little fluid layer, which helps transfer heat a lot better. Do the other side. Whoop! There it goes. That's all we have to do, and I'm still here. But I did have my safety glasses on just in case. To locate the battery, uh, I think we're going to put it right about here. Since we no longer need this battery terminal, we can just cu cut that out with a Dremel. The only thing we need room for is up here for our charging circuit. So again, safety glass is on. Start hacking into it. Pop that out, we'll take that out as well. Never let your tool come to rest on your nice mat. That's why you always buy a self-healing mat. Because you're an idiot like me. Alright, so the battery fits nicely in here. gone ahead and sandwiched in the little chip. Four wires coming out the back. It's pretty tight in there, but just to be safe in case I drop this thing, which I will all the time, just going to squeeze a little bit of hot snot in there. Keep it from moving around. Do the same thing up here. Let that cool, and then we'll hook up our wires to the battery and put this thing back together. With our battery leads trimmed, we'll just quickly solder them on. Test it out real quick. Looks good to me. So let's, uh, Lovingly cram this in. Even this little battery is a tight fit. I don't know how anyone expects to get an 18650 in here. A little dab of hot glue to keep it from moving around. Reinstall our PCB. And get the light back on the front. Horror of horrors, I put the battery in and I could not get the lens back on it. Uh, this is a different iteration from what I'm used to seeing. On a lot of these lights, there's a lot less plastic up here. 
Um, I don't know why they changed it, but we're just going to have to take a little bit more plastic off and we'll get it to fit. If you have one that looks like this on the inside, you're going to have a much easier time. Well, 20 minutes of cutting plastic and moving wires and cursing later. Everything fits together perfect. <laughs> With the newer flashlights, this shouldn't be so difficult, but the older ones have more plastic in them. So, just gotta screw it back in. And we're all done. Light works great. Let's make sure it recharges. It should show a blue light when it's charged and a red light when it's charging. So plug it in. There's our red light. It shows right through the front nice and easy. And when it's done, it'll be all blue and ready to go. Thanks for watching.